guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. So a few months ago, I checked out the LG 32GK850G and had tons of positive things to say about that monitor. It had a 165Hz refresh rate, offered great colors for a VA panel. It had G-Sync as well. And it also included a great monitor stand, which can't be taken for granted nowadays in the kind of world of $1,000 stands. So I was pretty happy with that monitor overall. When I looked at that monitor a few months ago, I believe it was in February, I think, that monitor was on sale in the UK for 750 pounds. Since then, that G-Sync model is now readily available from multiple retailers for 550 pounds in the UK or $550 on Amazon in the US. I know you're thinking, all right, Carl, that's all well and good. Well, then what is this monitor sat next to me? Well, this is the 32GK850F. And in case you haven't worked it out yet, this one is the FreeSync model. And this is available for 460 pounds in the UK and about $450 in the US. So what are you missing out on by saving 100 of your preferred currencies well let's take a look at what this 32 gk 50 f has to offer and we'll work it out from there so what can we expect from this thing sat beside me what are the specs we've got a 32 inch 8-bit va panel with a gray to gray response time of just five milliseconds it's set to the kind of faster preset in the menus and also offers one milliseconds with motion blur reduction enabled so that's a nice little feature Though enabling this will disable FreeSync, so do bear that in mind. With a screen this large, it requires a resolution of no less than 2560 by 1440, and that is what LG have delivered. It's also rocking a 144Hz panel, which is awesome to play with, but it's not overclockable to 165Hz compared to that G-Sync model I mentioned earlier. The VA panel offers 178 degree viewing angles, and the panel itself is covered in kind of a matte plastic to kind of reduce the glare and reduce reflections. The display also has a typical brightness of 400 nits and a minimum brightness of 320 nits. So yeah, some of you may have just twigged that this is a 400 nit peak brightness display, which can only mean one thing. HDR, HDR, HDR is so much better. HDR looks awesome. Unfortunately, that is not the case with this display. As with HDR 400 display, that basically means nothing. Turning on HDR in Windows still looks totally weird. Enabling it in a few games like Far Cry New Dawn looks horrible. Assassin's Creed Odyssey also looks horrible. They go with like the funny colors and it just doesn't look right. With Battlefield 5 being the only example where it actually does make a bit of a difference and look a little bit better. If you're buying this for its HDR ability, you will be disappointed. It's not just this display which is guilty of that. It's also apparent in pretty much anything less than 1000 nits peak brightness displays. This is one advantage of the FreeSync model over the G-Sync model is that the G-Sync brother doesn't have HDR, it doesn't have a peak brightness that is 400 nits, it only has a peak brightness of 350 nits. The G-Sync model does though have RGB lighting, so I guess that makes up for it. Physically, the 32GK850F is identical to its G-Sync brother other than the lack of the RGB lighting sphere on the rear. Instead, it just has a signature red ring and a signature red accent on the rear of the monitor stand found on the near enough all of LG's gaming monitors nowadays. From the front, LG also does a great job. The display is so subtle regards with its aesthetics. It's not too gamery. No massive ROG or Predator style logos to distract you from the display itself. It's got nice thin bezels, which are pretty common on a lot of monitors nowadays. So kind of nothing spectacular or different, but a nice feature nonetheless. Moving on to the physical size of this monitor itself, the LG display when mounted with the included stand measures in at a maximum width of 28.2 inches wide, 23.8 inches tall, and 10.8 inches deep. Obviously most of that being due to the kind of depth of the stand and how high that can go. Without the stand, the height is just 16.7 inches and the depth is just 2.2 inches. With the stand equipped, it weighs in about eight and a half kilos, but without the stand, the display weighs just 6.7 kilograms. Speaking of the stand, it's another signature feature from LG. It's sleek and subtle with only those minor red accents visible on the top of it. Although the rear of the stand is completely red, so depending on which way you're looking at it, it is 
kind of subtle, then again, not too subtle. It offers a height adjustment of 110 millimeters. It also offers tilt, swivel, and also pivot. So you can spin it around 90 degrees to use as a vertical display. There is also Visa support so that if you don't want to use this included stand, you can just wall or desk mount it yourself. As far as materials go, the majority of the display is covered in a matte plastic, which helps to kind of hide your sweaty fingerprints as you're kind of lifting this thing around or moving it or adjusting it. In the box, you get the power cord, a HDMI and a display port cable, and also the kind of clip holder on the back for putting your headphones on. Also comes with a USB pass-through cable for two quick charging support USB 3.0 ports on the rear of the display. On the rear is also where you connect your display cables and the power cable too, as well as even a headphone jack, as there's no built-in speakers. Looking around the display, we have the menu joystick at the bottom. Once clicking that menu joystick, you're greeted with tons of options, as well as a free kind of built-in gaming presets for RTS or FPS games. These presets reduce response times or height and black levels to help detect enemies in the dark. You can also select your refresh rate and using the kind of cheat and crosshairs, as well as many other general monitor features within the menus. As far as color work goes, out of the factory, the monitor covers 97.5% of the sRGB spectrum. LG also says on their website that this monitor does cover 95% of the DC p 3 color space as well, but I didn't see any options as how to enable that mode. Overall, not the most kind of accurate of panels as far as color grading and color critical work goes, but by no means the worst. Unfortunately though, ghosting is quite noticeable if you kind of run that little UFO ghosting test and if you go out of your way to really look for it. But during gaming sessions, like playing uh, FPS games, I never really noticed it. So. For me, it wasn't really much of a bugbear and I didn't notice it until I started to run those kind of ghosting tests to see if it was apparent or not. If you watched my other video about the G-Sync model, it may sound like I'm repeating myself. It's because, for the most part, I am. This monitor is near enough identical in every way imaginable for most users. Using this FreeSync model opposed to the G-Sync model, what are you really losing out on for the sake of that 100 pounds price difference. So let's list these differences out. Number one, the obvious one, you lose 21 Hertz refresh rate, a potentially big deal for the competitive viewers out there. Number two, another fairly obvious one, you lose G-Sync support. But if you have an AMD GPU, that's not a problem because you can't use it anyway. But if you have an Nvidia GPU, it's still not a problem because that also works with FreeSync as well. Thirdly, one of the most important things, you do lose the RGB lighting on the rear of the display, but you do gain a brighter display with HDR. And as a result of that, I imagine that's probably why it's slightly more color accurate. So other than those three points, there's not really a lot there. If you're strapped for cash, I'd say grab the FreeSync version. You really won't be disappointed. But if you're truly, truly, into your competitive online gaming, then the bump up to 165 hertz might just be the slightest edge that you're looking for. And if you kind of don't believe that FreeSync and video cards don't really work that well, get that kind of more peace of mind. But for me, generally flawless. So one thing to really bear in mind is there's still some great options out there from other brands. After a very, very brief search on overclockers.co.uk, I found a hands-free model that was a curved VA panel with 144 hertz refresh rate and free sync, but a very, very, very gamery look to it for just 350 pounds. So as always, I'd recommend working out what you want it to do, how it looks and kind of fits into your environment slash setup or workspace, because this is a big old beast. It's like, it's as tall when it's up high, but if you do decide to pick this display up, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Unless you're coming from like an Acer X27 monitor, those 4K 144Hz beasts, then maybe, maybe you'll be a bit disappointed with this one. Anyway though guys, that is the end of the video. As always, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to click that like button. And if you didn't, click that dislike button. Let me know what you thought about today's video in the comments section down below. And if you decide my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click that subscribe button so we can see each other again soon. And also, don't forget to click that bell, become a little bell ringer, and uh, then also you get notifications as to when my videos get uploaded. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.